Most passenger trains nowadays have a locomotive at each end, with most of the wheels on the carriages also being powered. This is so that when a train pulls into a station, the driver can just get out of the cab and climb into the cab at the other end so the train can pull out of the station without needing another engine to shunt the coaches, or have to waste time running the locomotive around to the other end of the train like they did in the days of steam and single diesel units. But what if I told you one of the first modern examples of a double-ended, non-electric train came about in 1904? Something similar to a modern double-ended passenger train was achieved by using push-pull trains back in the days of steam, where instead of the locomotive having to circle round to the front of the train at the end of the line, the locomotive would be positioned in the middle of the train, pulling one coach and pushing the other. This meant that the driver and fireman didn't need to waste time shunting the engine when they arrived at the end of the line. Sometimes, engines would just stay at one end of the train, pulling one way and pushing another, and while both techniques saved time, they weren't flawless. The reason engines got the front of a train is so that it's easier for the driver to see where he's going, so there's no problem when the engine is pulling the train, but when the engine is pushing the train, the driver is going to have difficulties seeing ahead of the coaches in front of them. The Great Western Railway, living up to their name, found a solution to this. Introducing the Great Western Auto Coach. First built in 1904, the idea was simple. Have the driver drive the train from the engine one way and from the front coach going the other way. The front coach would have the controls for the engine's regulator, brakes and whistles connected to it through several rotating shafts and linkages, meaning the driver had full control of the locomotive while standing in the front of the coach. Meanwhile, the fireman stayed in the engine, checking its valves and gauges. The guard, driver and fireman all communicated through a series of electric bells rigged up between the engine, guard's compartment and the coach's driving compartment. If more than one coach was needed on a train, the engine would often stay in the middle of the coaches, as drivers found there would be some play between the linkages if two coaches were connected in a row instead of directly to the engine. The design worked well for push-pull services, but the GWR was concerned that the sight of a steam engine in between two coaches would look jarring to some passengers. So, in 1906, some engines had housings built over them to make them blend in with the coaches. Coaling and filling the water tanks of these engines was much more difficult, and after about five years, the GWR figured out that the passengers didn't really care about the appearance of a locomotive in the middle of the train, and so they removed the casings from the engines. The auto coach was essentially one of the first examples of a modern, double-ended, multiple-unit train, with no shunting of coaches needed. The coaches also worked with a large range of their tank engines, ranging from their panniers, prairies, and most commonly, their 042-1400 class locomotives. The coaches were used right up until 1964, long after nationalisation, with the design receiving only some minor improvements and adjustments over the years, showing once again the Great Western Railway may have just been a little ahead of its time. Subscribe for more.